So, <laughs> I'm here with Mike Radenbaugh, one of the founding members of Rad Power Bikes. And we're checking out the new Rad City, which has sort of optimized regenerative braking. And this topic comes up again and again. People are like, so I can pedal and charge the battery. And I get it. I get that it's like this beautiful idea. But the reality is a little bit different. You're an expert on this stuff. You've built your own electric bikes. You're, I think, a leading electric bike company in the US at this point. Let's talk about it. What kind of efficiency, what, can you charge your yeah, e-bike yeah. by pedaling? What, what's the deal, man? So this is a really important topic. Our customer service team probably gets 10 to 20 inquiries a day wow. about this exact thing. Yeah. And, and you're right, it's a, it's a great idea and you can. So you can recharge a bike while pedaling. Um, Get like a just, bike stand and you're just there like totally. charging it in your living so room? During the winter in Seattle when we do uh, outside marketing events, yeah. our sales team will regularly get on the wagons because it has a center kickstand and pedal to mm. recharge the battery huh. and just kind of stay warm. So <laughs> on our bikes, if you apply the brake lever, yeah. the regen automatically comes on. It's a single level. It's uh, similar resistance as like lightly applying the brakes. Okay. And that does recharge the battery. But a human being attempting to recharge an e-bike battery would take an entire day. It would take oh your whole gosh. day pedaling. You'd be eating pizza to keep your energy level up and pedaling. It would take forever. And that's because you're converting your leg energy, some mechanical, mechanical energy, energy. Yeah. yeah, into electrical energy and then into chemical energy in the battery pack. Hmm. And it has to come back out again. So when I do all these conversions, it ends up being uh, a total loss. Hmm. So it's not efficient to do it that way. Wait, how efficient is it? You said it's possible. It's Absolutely. just not really. So what what efficiency are we talking so about? So for regular riding around town um, on my commuter bike, yeah. I get around 12% back. Hmm. But I, I kind of hyper mile, so which means just like being very cognitive of the way you're using regen and when you're coming up to a stop, you're applying it for a long period. Hmm. So if you're really careful with it, you can get 10 to 20% back with regen on an e-bike. So that's all the energy that you're pedaling or the, the hill, all of that mechanical energy equals 100%. And you only get 12 back just because converting it is so inefficient. Um, and, yeah, and there's a lot of other- It's like heat loss and absolutely. stuff? Absolutely, so there's all kinds of losses. So in the, on the physics side of it, it's a complex equation. The nice thing is with like advanced meters, even like the cycle analyst from uh, Grin Technologies yeah. or the watt meters we put on our bikes, you can see the total uh, watt hour consumption and then what you get back from regen. Hmm. So that's all calculated for you on more advanced meters, which is nice. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's very much a real thing. I mean, everyone talks about it more about saving brake pads, which is also very important. Yeah. So on a d daily driver commuter, I think regen's a really big plus just because you're not burning through brakes nearly as fast. Um, the pa are the pads expensive? Like, what do you... you I mean, know? we're talking 10, 20 bucks a set, but, but it's then also... it's the time and the energy that goes into doing that. Yeah, and yeah. most people would take it into a shop, so avoiding having to go into a shop to replace pads every season is a nice mm -hmm. thing if possible. I heard a story about, like, a Navy SEAL, or there, there were some, you know, behind enemy lines operation going on, and, and they set up a bicycle specifically to regenerate so they could charge their radio or something, and... I feel like I met the guy and he was like, oh, it was exhausting. And this is a super strong, tough guy. And he was like, I was just trying to charge that radio it was ridiculous. It, it, yeah, again, it's such a beautiful idea. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about how, how the regen on these ones actually works. We've got these, you know, brake levers up here from Tecro. They're e-bike specific. And you see how they have two wires, not just one. The second wire sends a signal to the controller that says, hey, turn off the motor. And in this case, because we're using that gearless direct drive motor, see how big this is? It's, it's not quite as small and compact because the wider it is, you get an improved mechanical advantage and you have magnets glued on the inside of that and they repel against an electromagnetic stator. Okay, and then those two things working in conjunction give you power, that's the motor acting, or they, it repels and it, and it consumes some power and it's able to send that back to the battery. Did I get that right, That's Mike? That's it, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and, the, and one of the main reasons direct drive hub motors for the torque is a big part of it are bigger than geared hub motors. Mm -hmm. They need to be because of the efficiency. Yeah. And then also thermal mass. So oh, direct drive dissipate hub the motors, heat. Exactly. So generally like really high power e-bikes run uh, large direct drive hub motors because heat dissipation and also just mechanical loading, like gears end up getting shredded up at 10,000 yeah, yeah. watts. And that's one of the things about a bike like this, and it sounds like part of the reason you chose it for the Rad City is like, hey, this is your everyday bike, you're constantly using it, and when you don't have little gears in there, it's a little bit quieter, but part of that quiet is also there's not rubbing happening, it's not physically in contact with gears. That's right, so the only thing that can generally wear out in a direct drive hub motor is bearings, but that can take anywhere from five years to 15 years, so it can, it's a nice thing, it decreases the service parts in the motor. Not to say that geared hub motors require more service, but mm -hmm. if they're 
beat down day in, day out, a direct drive hub motor just gives you a little bit more peace of mind. The other thing I really like about direct drive on top of the regen is just the silence and simplicity. So you can kind of blend in a little bit easier yeah. on the bike pass. Um, well, it's tough because it's like on the one hand, it's bigger. So it's like visually you're not as stealth, but noise wise and just it's smoother. It's kind of a smooth ride. So let's you know look at a real life example here in terms of how energy is used. If I'm buying some beans, you know, I don't grow beans. Um, I think it sounds awesome, but I have them imported. I usually go to the store and they're usually grown somewhere else and they're brought to me usually by a truck and that's fairly efficient, but there's every step of the way, there's the sun coming down, growing it using water, then they harvest it, they put it in a truck, they bring it to me, I get it off the shelves, I boil those beans, I put them in a burrito, I love burritos, and then I <laughs> eat it and and then my body breaks it down chemically and then it converts it to mechanical energy and heat and everything. Finally, it's delivered to the bicycle. Electric or not, I mean, that's a big process to go through versus something like, I mean, how does the electrical grid work? What do we... Yeah, so in, in Washington, we're really lucky here because we have so much hydro and, and non-coal mm -hmm. sources. So even even when studies are done in the worst South Dakota, North Dakota, where there's the most coal in the grid of the whole country, yeah. um, electric cars, electric bikes still come out way ahead. Way efficient. Of, yeah, carbon output per yeah. mile. Well, we're missing the oil piece here. It's like, I'm not trying to be controversial here. Even oil, it's like you're getting it from somewhere, you're bringing it, and it's high energy density, you're using it, versus going all those steps with your human body. We sometimes think like, oh, I'm riding my bike. Like, this is so efficient. Sure. But the truth is, like, the way we get food, the food you eat, th these all come into play. And whether it's electric or not, you're using some of your body energy and when you add that electric assist it's it's you know we talk about that whole cheating thing like oh is it cheating to right. ride an electric bike yeah so we get that all the time uh, the, the the cheating question electric bikes are not necessarily for exercise it's a great plus that you can still exercise you can pedal as much or as little as you want to mm -hmm. but an electric bike is about getting around it's about energy efficiency it's about timeliness it's about moving quickly across your city your town yeah so the, the cheating comment, it really doesn't have any ground to stand on because that's not what an e-bike's for. Um, and, you know, coming back to the way we use energy, and maybe you're cheating yourself if you're eating a whole bunch of food and you think you're being efficient. That actually electricity, even coal, is is way more efficient than the body. And the bicycle, you know, is is a big step up from just walking. So we're just talking about these, these steps. Yeah, the guys up at Grin Tech, I think, did a study on energy efficiency of the human body where the food comes from, water shipped in from across yeah. the country versus an e-bike charge in various types of uh, grid situations. And the e-bike comes out ahead almost all the time. That's awesome. Unless you're a Kenyan distance runner who can eat a burrito and run 60 miles. Yeah, there are exceptions, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and, and a road bike on a road that was paved using a ton of energy. I mean, there's all these sort of like different angles to look at. I think the big question we wanted to answer here was just about regenerative braking and what does that really mean? Can you charge the bike? Yeah, technically you can. Um, it's just, you know, putting some, some information about what that actually looks like. And if you're in the situation where that's the best way to get electricity or the only way, yes, you technically could. It's just going to take a lot of burritos. Yeah. And there, there are some, there's a company in Portland now that makes a grid tie inverter huh. for e-bikes. Really? So you, what you do is you unplug your motor cable, you plug in the grid tie inverter, you plug that inverter into your AC system in your house. So in developing countries you can oh, pedal and generate power for your lights because that's the really that's a really great point mike sometimes it's not so much about efficiency it's about access to light or something and you know light led light bulbs take so little it's like if this is your motor if you're not connected to a grid then you but you have burritos absolutely there you go yeah it's so it's so wonderful i love the science behind it you're you're very knowledgeable your products are, are awesome we've had a great time out here um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll do, you know, have another little article and I'll link to that in the video description and I'll link to the Endless Sphere thing and just try to you know, get some knowledge out there. Feel free to chime in in the comments. Maybe there's something we've missed or whatever, but my hope is that people come away from this with a little bit of a, a better perspective on what it means for generation. Yeah. Thanks, Court. Yeah. Thanks again, Mike.